Pete, um, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm a junior at Georgetown studying international politics and economics, and I'm calling in from southeastern Massachusetts. Um, so my question is, COVID-19 is offending and changing all of our lives as we know it right now, um, not just here in the United States, but globally. But when all this is over, um, we're going to see a shift in priorities globally and a possible shift in the international order. Similar to changes we have seen in major global events, such as after the World War II. How do you think the next U.S. presidential administration, whichever it will be, should reshape the U.S. foreign policy agenda in the wake of this crisis? What a great question, Stacey. And I think you're right that, that this crisis is on the order of a war or any other world historical event you can think of in terms of just how profoundly it's going to change the future around the world. By the way, just a quick tangent. If you think about it, uh, we're pretty much the exception uh, among kind of humanity uh, generationally in that we haven't really dealt with plague very much. Uh, there across the last hundred years in America, uh, maybe a couple of exceptions. One very big one would be the experience of the gay community uh, with HIV AIDS. Uh, another would be polio and, and what that did to, to my parents and grandparents generation. But by and large, uh, the fact that most people in the last hundred years in America have not had to deal with pandem pandemics much actually makes us the exception, right? You can go back through uh, certainly medieval European history all the way back through through biblical times and see just how much, uh, you know, it's right on, on the list along with wars, uh, uh, what, what pandemics can do to change societies. And now we are we are going to see that. One reason I think your question is so salient is that I think this could be a dress rehearsal for climate change. Uh, in addition to being a, a, a horrible situation and an extremely important situation in its own right that's going to require that we rise to it in new ways, it also foreshadows in very specific ways the pattern of problems and needed solutions that's true when it comes to climate. Think about it. Um, a lot depends on whether we listen to science. Uh, there will be temptations to pit uh, at least short-term economic structures that we're used to against steps that need to be taken to deal with the scientific reality. Um, we're dealing with a threat that doesn't care what country it's in. And so it calls for a maximum of global coordination where maybe that's not in our habit. In, in so many different ways, there is a parallel between responding to a pandemic and responding to, uh, uh, to a climate security threat. And so I think that's one reason among many why this is the time to really refashion our imagination around international relations. What does that look like? Well, uh, for one thing, I think it means we need more, not less, by way of international institutions uh, that can deal with this. International political institutions don't have, a, have definitely a mixed track record, uh, whether we're thinking about uh, the, the, the challenges for effectiveness at the UN, uh, or even the ability of, uh, uh, you know, look at the challenges that the European Union is, is, is facing right now. That's not a detriment to the European project, but it shows you just how complicated it is when we have a political dimension to it. But there are non or less political international institutions that are incredibly important right now, from the World Health Organization and its role in, in dealing with, with pandemic crises, to organizations like the IPCC, uh, which is really the, I think, go-to uh, factual global authority on questions like climate change. So I think what we've got to do is we've got to figure out how our political relationships, whether they're structured in things like the G20 or the UN, or whether they're just bilateral relationships among countries, can be a little more compatible with uh, the level of hopefully apolitical insight and information coming out of those bodies that we should all stand up, uh, that create a global international scientific community that can be alerted uh, and can be deployed to help deal with these things. My hope is this also helps us reprioritize some of our hard security assets, right? I mean, um, it turns out one of the biggest, we're facing the, the, the biggest national security crisis uh, of, uh, you know, of our lifetimes. And uh, as of this moment, the, the biggest thing the military can do about it is uh, deploying uh, the, the two hospital ships uh, from the U.S. Navy that are serving uh, the New York area and, uh, and I believe the Bay Area at this time. Uh, so what else does, do we need to rethink in terms of uh, both our military to military relationships and our own defense priorities? There's no easy answers on this, but I think the, the questions you're raising are exactly the right ones for us to examine uh, as we start to form a 21st century picture of what the real threats 
to both our individual uh, national securities and our, our kind of global shared concerns are going to look like. And if there was ever a moment to shock us into being more imaginative, we're in it.